It's still TV3 New Day, and I'm sure you know that price of oil has been falling uh, from the beginning of the year because of the coronavirus pandemic. Yesterday, it's recorded its lowest in, in the U.S., we're told, and you know Ghana is a net exporter of crude, so this obviously is going to have an impact on our economy. You already know that our government had projected that the coronavirus pandemic is going to cost our economy sub 9.5 billion cities in revenue. And what is that uh, going? How is that going to really impact on us? I'm talking about the oil situation on the world markets. Uh, should we be taking advantage of the situation? We'll be speaking with energy expert Kojo Poku, who is joining us via Skype. We'll also later uh, be speaking with uh, an energy expert who is also the executive director of the Institutes of Energy Security, Pakwisi and Namwasichi on phone. But first, let's speak to uh, Kojo Puku, who is an energy expert. You saw the, the story yesterday uh, of how low oil prices falling on the world market. What came to mind? Um, you see, let's explain a little. It's not the fact that the oil price for future deliveries have mm. gone down. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look at the present price for crude oil Brent, it's higher than it was two months ago. Mm -hmm. What you saw yesterday, which is the minus 37, mm -hmm. is futures, is future mm -hmm. contracts. You mm -hmm. know, let me explain a little bit for your viewers to understand what futures are. Mm -hmm. Oil is not bought on a spot buy. You can't just go into the market today and saying that I want to buy 100 barrels of oil. Mm -hmm. It is sold for a future date delivery. So mm -hmm. oils that were sold in, let's say, February mm -hmm. for three months to be delivered in May. Mm -hmm. Now, that oil price is a contract and that contract is between two parties. And normally, traders who are on the world market, investors, now trade these contracts. So I might have a contract which I entered into in February. So I'll have a million barrel of crude delivered to me in May. Mm -hmm. Now, that contract would have a price of, let's say, $30. Now, that contract is called a future. And it's traded on the world market. And when it's traded, at the time of delivery... Somebody might not want it. So mm -hmm. the value of that contract now diminishes. What is happening is that there is no storage for crude oil all around the world. And mm -hmm. especially in the U.S., mm -hmm. they don't have storage. So the delivery contract for next for today, Tuesday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. contracts that were entered into in January, mm -hmm. three months down the line to be right. delivered today, mm -hmm. does not have any value because nobody wants it. Right. So what is happening is that that contract... If you want to take on that contract which is being delivered today, mm -hmm. they will pay you $37 a barrel to mm -hmm. receive that contract because right. they are now paying you to basically store that crude oil and have it for free. Yeah, but so, we are told that the price for June is estimated at some $15 or $20 a barrel, which is lower. No, the, 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 the future trade for mm -hmm. um, the, a month after, for May, which mm -hmm. is next month deliveries, mm -hmm. are $20. Yes. So, the, in terms of spot buy, mm -hmm. the three months from now, the end of summer, autumn deliveries mm -hmm. are around $27. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Which is a bit higher because, remember, last week there was a OPEC plus meeting which cut the production of crude oil. Mm -hmm. So, what it means is that people who are looking to Let's say Ghana, we, we said that, look, we have storage. Mm -hmm. These crude oil that nobody wants, we want it. Mm -hmm. Now, we will be paid to receive that crude oil. But unfortunately, Ghana does not have those um, space storage to store facilities. those kind of yeah. crude oil. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the contract which is due, so the contract from January, which is due today, this week going, does not have any value. Mm -hmm. That is what they are talking about, that there is a minus 37 per barrel on the futures right but if you want to do a spot buy or buy crude for let's say three months from now which is mm -hmm. about end of july august mm -hmm. the price is about 27 dollars a barrel yeah which so, is higher than what it was two months ago two months ago okay but w w how do we take advantage of the situation we are told that we should be uh, looking at empowering boss you know to have a lot more storage facilities to take advantage of the situation what do you make of that 
Well, for crude oil, it's not bust. For crude oil, it's Tema Oil Refinery. Yes, we should empower to, to refine Tema Oil the, Refinery, right. which is tall, mm -hmm. to have more storage to be able to store. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I mean, it's, it's, it's not something that comes around every day. These are uh, uncharted territory. We mm -hmm. are looking at the COVID-19 creating havoc around the world. So such situation might never arise again because you, I don't think in the future you have a situation where futures will trade negative. Mm -hmm. it's um, it, it is a very unprecedented but i it is not we need to empower tour we mm -hmm. need to invest in tour the government we've been saying it over and over government is not investing in tour mm -hmm. and tour has now recently gone through quite a lot so we don't even know the the future and then the policy and then the the path of which tour is on now mm -hmm. um i understand there is an acting md but the bottom line is that the owner of the refinery which is um the government should right. invest in tour Mm -hmm. well, what kind of investments are we looking at? If you say, we, should we have a local refinery? We have a local refinery. The investment yes. we are talking about is mm -hmm. that one now, Tor only produces crude oil that has what is called 1,500 ppm. It means the sulfur content of the crude coming out of Tor mm -hmm. is quite high than the international standard of 50 ppm. Mm -hmm. There should be an investment in Tor to help them put in what you call a desulfurizer. Mm -hmm. And that will now take more sulfur from their crude oil and help them meet the international standard. Mm -hmm. That investment is needed. Mm -hmm. They need to expand the refinery from 45 barrels per day to a 60,000 Sorry, 45,000 barrels per day to 60,000 barrels per day refinery. Mm -hmm. All those things need to be done. And when it's done, you need tanks to be able to store these products. And they don't have tanks. Most mm -hmm. of their tanks are either not working or faulty. Mm -hmm. But is that not a sad situation? Because this could have been, you know, a brilliant opportunity for us to take advantage of the situation. Oh, very well. It would have been. And I'm sure some countries around the world will take these deliveries and basically be paid to receive the crude oil and have it for free. Mm -hmm. You know, this in effect have um, tour not working well. Like you said, very sad situation. Mm -hmm. Imagine we are getting crude oil at minus 37. Mm -hmm. It means we can refine it and make the products, which is the petrol and diesel, mm -hmm. on our pumps much cheaper. Right. What we have seen in current days is that um, the marketers and the BDCs are ripping us off. Mm -hmm. Look, if you look at the world market prices of petrol, mm -hmm. the world market price of crude oil, our pump, really, we should have about three dollars, or if not, sorry, three cities, or if not two cities, fifty pesos. And the oil marketers and or the per liter, per liter, yeah, per liter, yes, mm. we should three have something around. Per liter. If you look at the prices on the world market, mm -hmm. which is nothing to go by, mm -hmm. we should have three cities or something around maybe two cities, fifty pesos. Mm -hmm. But the more you engage MPA why they are allowing the oil marketers and the BDCs to have high margins on their product. They will tell you that, well, it's a free market. It's a deregulated they, market, yes. It's a dereg we know that. It's a deregulated market. Mm -hmm. But though it's a deregulated market, nobody is allowed to make astronomical margins on Ghanaians. Okay. There is an acceptable margin, which that's why MPA is a regulator. Mm -hmm. If not, then Ghanaians are dead. Mm -hmm. Because the problem we have, and putting MPA there when we deregulate the market is for the government to have some level of intervention. If you leave it to people like us who are mm -hmm. private men and businessmen, mm -hmm. then nobody can afford to come out. Mm -hmm. We will make the maximum we can, 120, 150 percent profit on a product which is needed to run the economy. So people, there's a check, though it's a deregulated market, there's a check on what margin everybody's supposed to make. Mm -hmm. And now MPA is allowing these um, BDCs and OMCs to make mm -hmm. astronomical profit on Ghanaians, mm -hmm. which for me is very sad. Mm. How can we take advantage of the current situation? I mean, we already know what we have in Ghana. We know what our situation is. Tor doesn't have the capacity to refine and all that. How do we take advantage of the situation we can't, my dear, in, in, in the adverse side of it, we are we also... We can't exported. at all? We can't at all, because where are you going to put it? Do you have... Are we going to start digging holes to put a crude oil in? We, we can't have it. If you... There, there might be a good thing going on out there, but if you are not invited to it, you can't take advantage of it. What we should be mindful of is that when crude oil was around $18 to $20 a barrel, mm -hmm. it left a hole of about $800 million in our budget. Mm -hmm. Now that crude oil has gone up a bit to $27 and it will probably inch up to the 30s, it now helps our Ministry of Finance to have a little bit more money under this COVID-19 situation. Mm -hmm. So we should be mindful of asking for 
free crude oil, trying to take advantage of it, mm -hmm. when we are also exporters and most of our budget is made out of how much money we get from mm -hmm. the international market prices. Mm -hmm. Let, okay, so you say Ghana, I mean, there's no hope for on, on what exactly we can do. Let's look at Africa or ECOWAS, you know, for that matter. How can we take advantage of the situation? U.S. says it's rejecting oil from other countries because it doesn't have what it takes to store. Well, ECOWAS, when, you know, it's sad. When people talk of ECOWAS, they make it look like there's a lot of countries out there. <laughs> Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, and maybe Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm are the main countries in ECOWAS. I don't know if you've traveled around a lot in the ECOWAS countries. I mean, you, you are looking at likes of Mali, Niger, Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia. These are small countries. Mm -hmm. So if the major players like Nigeria, Nigeria would be one of the biggest countries that have been doing crude oil for a long time. If they don't have storage and, and they've been producing, so their tanks are probably almost full also. Mm -hmm. So it's unfortunate that it's a good thing going on out there America mm -hmm. is not accepting it because they don't have the space for it. Mm -hmm. it. It will be difficult for anybody in the um, ECOWAS if will have the storage because mm -hmm. if these three countries, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Nigeria, mm -hmm. and maybe, um, like I said, Burkina Faso, which mm -hmm. seems to be a little bit active, don't have these storage. I don't mm -hmm. think any, any of the companies will have it. Uh, the Equatorial Guineas and those, they also produce, so they have their own problems of where to keep their own um, their own products. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a question just coming in and I just want you to answer. It says that with hindsight, should we have allowed BOST keep their increase of 0 0.03 pesos on the UPPF when they requested for it to help boost their finances? What do you think? Well, I was in support of the BOST margin when it was being increased. Mm -hmm. I just thought the timing was very bad. You remember, okay. they tried to introduce a margin a, a week or two before Christmas. And some of us thought it was very insensitive. If they have waited, done it earlier in maybe October, November, or waited after Christmas and introduced it, I don't have a problem with that. Boss need that boss margin to be able to do the necessary work that boss needs to do. Ghana, we tend to now, um, on one hand, blame companies for not doing what they are supposed to do. Yes, there's a lot of waste in tour. There's cartels in tour that basically get up to all sorts of things. We should check those things. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't give them the necessary resources they need, like the margin. Because if you look at what they've been receiving for so many years, the dollar to the city has eroded that margin. So you can't really do much. So mm -hmm. boss do need that extra money to do what they need. But at the same time, they should be checked with the waste and the cartels and the kind of things that goes on there. Mm -hmm. Boss is the only country that, sorry, boss is the only company mm -hmm. that has a high dissipation evaporation mm -hmm. now when they store products the amount of weight that the account that has evaporated is higher than like 10 times the industry standard mm -hmm. that's not true that's mm -hmm. not possible it means right. somebody is there stealing and nobody's mm -hmm. checking it so for me i think boss needs attention the new management should work hard to get rid of all those cartels and people doing all these dubious deals at all uh, sorry, at boss then be able to ask parliament and Ghanaians who support their increase in margin Energy experts, Kojopo, we are grateful that you made time to speak with us this morning.